What's up, nerds? We are your hosts. I am Jake. And I'm Chad. This week we are sponsored by Ray's Energy Drinks. We are also sponsored by Crybaby Craig's Hot Sauce. This week we're going to talk about Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery, now streaming on Netflix. We'll also be talking about The Witcher, Blood Origins, also streaming on Netflix. And we're going to get into some rumors and some wishful thinking for upcoming (laughs) stuff. So, let's get into it. This is the All Things Nerd Podcast. Welcome back, nerds, to the All Things Nerd Podcast, your weekly dive into all things nerd. Chadley, how was your week? Well, Jake Lee. Doesn't uh, work. It doesn't. <laughs> uh, it was, <laughs> you know, oh, oh, this week particular had some ups and downs. We're not really going to get into the downs here because that's not our podcast. <clears throat> but also, I mean, it's been a couple of weeks since we've... Uh, done an episode because the holidays and stuff like that so Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that part was good you know i had dinner with you and nicole on christmas eve which was very nice it was a nice welcome had some vegan lasagna which Mm -hmm. you unbeknownst to you guys made me feel more at home because that's what we always did for christmas dinner i was lasagnas and stuff like that so that was Mm cool and i got to see my dad which is pretty rad mm-hmm. and then other than that you know i just chilled what nice. about what about you um well we had a uh pretty <coughs> annoying house guest on christmas eve uh no i'm just kidding, <laughs> I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding uh, <laughs> um i don't know christmas was good it was kind of a lot you know mm-hmm. uh my is my mom there's nicole's mom there's nicole's dad uh and then my dad's side of the family um so there's there's a lot of christmas and you know i'm not a christmas guy for christmases yeah <laughs> it was a little rough we made it we survived the holidays well that's um, good yeah and as you know everybody listening would know that today is January 1st. So, Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. And we May hope that 2023 not fuck you as hard as 2022 did. Really, just the past, like, three years. <laughs> Hopefully this is up and up. Like Target brand. Uh, <clears throat> but also, we just hope that everyone had, you know, good holidays. Whatever it is that you celebrate or don't. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In sad news, in frustrating news, football today. No. Oh. Vikings got destroyed. Yeah. It was, it was a real bummer. Went into the and... game super cocky because, I mean, the Packers have been sucking. You know, they were 7-8. and eight. It wouldn't have hurt as much as it did if it wasn't the Packers that did it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was still, up until the fourth quarter, it was a blowout. Like, yeah. let's be honest. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. It was real upsetting. Yeah. What was the final score? Like, 17 to 41, something like 41, that? 41, I believe, yeah. Jeez. Woof. I mean, most of the game it was, <coughs> three. we had a three-point, that was it. Yeah. And everything else was just them dominating us and then we got a couple touchdowns at the end in the last quarter but it was too little too late yeah yeah at that point green bay had taken rogers out and put in their backup and justin jefferson had been taken out and it was just i mean yeah we made the regardless of how the game went uh the vikings are already in the playoffs so yeah whatever the packers still have to win next week to even Make the playoffs. Make the playoffs, yeah. So, and they're so. playing Detroit, which is, you know, gonna be it's a gonna be a team. good game. It's yeah. gonna be a good game. Yeah. Hopefully for Detroit. Hopefully. I never thought I'd say it, but I'm rooting for Detroit. Yeah. I just am so sick of 
whatever. I don't want to get into that. <coughs> of Packers fans being like, look at our <laughs> mediocre team that still does better than your team. Yeah. And even yeah. today, like, whoa, we crushed you. It's like, yeah. Uh, good luck next week on not making yeah. the playoffs. Yeah. We've also had, you know, the playoffs locked down for a couple weeks here. So yeah. whatever. Brag all you want. Yeah. Just uh, <laughs> suck a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oof. <laughs> Actually, Anyways. I'm not sorry. I stand by that statement. We got beat. It's it was fair and square. Justin Jefferson, who's like our I mean our two best receivers, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, between the two of them only got 15 yards, one reception each. It yeah. was it was a rough game. I mean, they were like double teamed the entire yeah. game. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, seriously, to the point where, I mean, Dalvin Cook had more receptions than both of them combined. Yeah. Yeah. And more yardage from receptions than both of them combined. Like, it was just... Oh, you already put the... (laughs) I went off script with the Happy New Year thing, and now I'm looking at the script, and you (laughs) had it in there for after talking about the Vikings. So... (laughs) Let's go fuck myself. <laughs> Mahalo. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I have an itch on my arm and I'm just like. <clears throat> well, I mean, we have a few things we want to talk about. It's going to be a pretty loose form episode this week. Because uh, there's not a whole lot of like major nerd things going that happened uh, the past couple weeks. So we have a lot coming up, though, which is exciting. But let's just go ahead and get into our first sponsor, which is Ray's Energy Drinks. You all know. You know. It's been a couple of years of this. Yeah. Um, It's a pickled habanero and garlic. (laughs) It's still funny. (laughs) It's still funny. Uh, No, but great energy drinks. Zero calories, zero sugar, zero crash. Uh, If that's not your thing, they have so much more to offer from... Protein to pre-workout to sleep aid supplements, cake in a cup, pancakes. Yeah, all good stuff. Uh, So listen up, learn how to save 15%. We'll be right back with you to talk about Glass Onion. What's up, nerds? I wanted to take a minute and talk to you about Ray's Energy, an incredible energy drink that provides max energy with zero crash. Ray's Energy takes a giant leap of faith with instilling a high-quality formula to bring a powerful, yet sustained, energetic experience to help you push your workouts and focus to the next level. Perfect for anyone at any time, empowered by their refresh formula technology, Ray's Energy delivers a performance-enhancing energy drink that aids in multiple different categories that include targeted focus, better recovery time, improved clean energy levels, and a boost in stamina and hydration. But most importantly, every can of Ray's Energy has absolutely zero calories, zero sugar, and zero carbohydrates to give you a smarter and healthier option. So don't settle for an energy drink that contains more sugar and carbohydrates than you can count. Instead, head over to repsports.com. That's R-E-P-P-S-P-O-R-T-S dot com and use the promo code nerd podcast at checkout for 15 percent off your order or if you don't know what you want go ahead and click the link that's in the description for to get a 50 dollars sample pack for free all you do is you cover the cost of shipping again make sure you use promo code nerd podcast at checkout to let them know that we sent you all right friends we are going to talk about glass onion a knives out story uh, now streaming on Netflix. Uh, this is the follow-up to, you guessed it, Knives Out, uh, starring Daniel Craig. It's it's a, kind of a sequel. Uh, it's the same detective, but a different case. Yeah. Another star-studded cast, which is <coughs> a lot of fun. Uh, we had Edward Norton, which is awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, One of my oh, favorite shit. actors of all time. Same. Yeah. Um, Kate oh, Hudson. Shit. Kate Hudson. Uh, Jan- Janelle, Janelle Monet. Yep, Janelle Monet. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, she is brilliant in the, in it. Yeah, and she rocked that role, and she's just an incredible musician too. Yeah, not too bad to look at. Either. Yeah, she's also very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dave Bautista. Dave Bautista. So random, small. Oh, random. Uh, <laughs> Ethan, oh, there, gang. <laughs> Ethan Hawke has a small cameo. Oh yeah, that's right. So did Hugh Grant had yeah, a small Hugh cameo. Grant. Uh, just the we'll, we'll get into that. But on the side of cameos, there's some good ones in there. Um yeah. And then uh, Catherine Hahn, obviously, is in mm-hmm. it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I forget the girl's name in real life. I'm gonna actually look it up. Um, but she's from Outer Banks. If you guys have watched any of that, it's on Netflix. Uh, there's two seasons out. She's the I main, haven't seen it. The main female role in it. Um, yeah. Anyways. But, well, back to cameos then while you're looking that up. Uh, <coughs> Madeline Klein. Madeline Klein. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Uh, but there's, it takes place during 2020, like during the lockdown. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and it's all these rich people trying to like survive, you know, the lockdown. Um, and it's first off, it's just hilarious. But we see like Daniel Craig like on a Zoom call, but also playing like the video game Among Us mm-hmm. uh, with Angela Lansbury, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Uh, who was the other person that he was on the call with? Um, Someone else, and it's just <clears throat> just super funny. Um, also, Yo-Yo Ma has a small uh, cameo in it. The, the famous cellist uh, helps solve a, a music puzzle. Yeah. Cool. Uh, we missed one of the main, kind of one of the main <coughs> cast. Yeah, she was one of the main cast. Uh, Jennifer Henwick. Um, she was in the Iron Fist show. Oh, the, the, the girl that plays uh, Colleen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah. go go on. It's just very enjoyable. Yeah, I mean it's it's fun. I love a good murder mystery. <coughs> I do too. And these these are some of my. I liked the first one quite a bit, which is why I was super hyped for this one. Um, <clears throat> it did not disappoint. No, not at all. It was great. Yeah, kept me guessing. Kind Threw of me for a loop, kind of. I guess I did guess. It kept some me stuff, guessing, but I I definitely miss. I guessed wrong on a couple <coughs> things, uh, which we can get into. But uh, it was a lot of fun. Again, like you said, uh, Edward Norton's one of my favorite actors as well. So that was yeah, that was awesome. And he hasn't been in like a ton lately, so it's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> fuck. He's also like one of those. Uh, actors that i think is a better villain mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i agree it's great um however in this i mean still you know he plays a he plays elon musk let's mm-hmm. be honest uh today's villain you know <laughs> uh so it wasn't much of a stretch uh very believable I thought going into it that he was going to be the one that died. That was my original notion. Oh, spoiler alert. Oh, yeah, we never called it up. Spoiler (laughs) alert. Okay, you've had enough time. That was also my original thought. Yeah. He was going to die, and then uh, Blanc, Daniel Craig's character, would then have to figure out which of his friends murdered him. Yeah, because the premise was that he was doing like a a murder mystery weekend getaway for all of his rich friends, Mm -hmm. where he was going to be the victim. And so, like going into it, I was like, he's actually going to die, and they're going to think it's a game. And Daniel Craig's going to be like, no, this is real. Yeah, like this motherfucker's dead. (laughs) (coughs) Since we were talking about that off camera. (laughs) <laughs> I know a prop head when I see a prop head. <laughs> oh my god! 
Booty sweat. <laughs> Bust a nut bar? <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, not what happened. No, not at all. Uh, turns out that the original murder that set up the mystery uh, happened off camera before this getaway. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then also Dave Bautista kicks it. Oh, yeah. Just <laughs> such a dumb way. But it does provide one of the best <clears throat> one-liners ever. And it's from uh, Kate Hudson's character, who's just kind of like a, a washed-up model, basically. Model, actress. You know, she's just dumb. She's Kate Hudson. No, I'm just kidding. <coughs> just kidding. I like Kate I like Hudson. Hudson. I, I, do, I do too. I was just joking. Sorry. No, you're fine. Uh, I don't know why I'm like forgiving you for the joke. You didn't offend me with that. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> Daniel Craig like points out that the way that Dave Bautista died was that he was basically like intentionally sent into anaphylactic shock because mm. he's allergic to pineapple. Someone put pineapple juice in his drink. And he's like, that's dumb. And Kate Hudson's like, it's so dumb. It's brilliant. He's like, no, it's just <laughs> dumb. Yeah, there's a scene in the beginning of the movie where they're all getting basically a... Uh, the cure COVID. for COVID. Yeah. And Batista is like, or his character is like, is there pineapple in that? I can't have pineapple. And then they give him the dose or whatever. And literally... I turned to my girlfriend and I was like, "That's how he's gonna die." <laughs> like pineapple. It was just like right away. I was like, "That's how he's gonna die." <coughs> yeah. yeah. Sure as the Earth is flat, that's how it happened. Wait a second. <laughs> we can't be telling people the truth. <laughs> They're all sheep. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Neither of us believe that. Yeah. Uh. One that it's the Earth is the flat. Earth. All the planets. That's just flat. not. Um, I mean, the Flat Earth Society can't actually believe it if they say that they have members all over the globe. Like, that's on like their fucking about us page. Smart. Yeah, so smart. <clears throat> um, Simple Jack. <laughs> but 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 pa. <laughs> it makes my eyes rain. <laughs> If you're not following us, I'm sorry. If you are, welcome you're to welcome. the joke. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> but this, Back to the movie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's hilarious, and it's a great, like, in-depth, like, microcosm look at literally how, like, the elite are. Like, mm-hmm. you know, the, the one percenters. Because, and it goes like on through... Like OnlyFans, or...? No, because oh, it seems oh, like okay. everyone's in the top 1% <laughs> on that site. Uh, no, but I just gave away that, you know. I've looked at OnlyFans. Cool. Uh, woo! I haven't. I know what it is, but I've never spent a fucking dime on that shit. Sorry, bud. <laughs> I don't care. Love you. <laughs> no, you're fine. I'm actually not really ashamed of that. But Porn also, free. sorry, Mom. Sorry, Mom. Yeah. Oh, I know. Uh, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I don't. Whatever. Yeah, moving, moving on. on. Uh, but no, just like the, the super wealthy, how they will just go to like incredibly unethical lengths mm-hmm. to keep their wealth and their status. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of what the real meaning of yeah. this yeah. film is because the first one's very much about like old money mm-hmm. you know like legacy inheritance and, that yeah. and you know not having to do anything to get rich just waiting for you know the mm-hmm. elder to die so you get get what's owed just for being did you born. did you catch the big parallel between the two movies that it's very much like fuck the rich well no there's like a physical um, thing in both movies. No, go on. The painting. In the first movie, 
there is a painting of the guy who gets murdered, <clears throat> and at the end, and he's frowning in the beginning, and at the end of the movie, uh, he's smiling. And then when they uh, reference the Mona Lisa, they say that the reason that painting is so beautiful is because she's either smiling or frowning or following you like wherever you are. It was kind of a nod to the oh. first movie. It was cool. I did not catch that. That is really cool. Not a joke. But... I know. It was cool. It is super cool. <laughs> um, yeah. So. At what? I mean, <clears throat> without going into too many details, when did you guess correctly who the killer was? Right away. As soon as they introduced him. As soon as this... And I'm not being cocky because I I messed up horribly what the intentions were, uh, but as soon as they introduced the killer, and I won't we, we won't ruin it for anybody, listen or I guess maybe we probably will, but spoiler alert. Um, <clears throat> uh, as soon as they introduced that character, I was like, that's that's definitely who it's going to be, and th- that's when my uh, uh, mind kind of shifted on. Okay, this person's gonna die, and then I was like, "Ooh, I don't know if that's who's gonna actually die. It's gonna be him." Who? Oh, fuck. <laughs> well, we already said Dave Bautista dies. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I I nailed it right away. My reasoning was off. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. It took me until like halfway through the movie, like kind of majority of the story of them on this island plays Should we just say who it is? Out. We've already thrown out a spoiler yeah, alert. It's, Spo- yeah. yeah. Ed Norton's the killer. Yeah. <gasps> oh. And we also talked about how we like him better as a villain anyways. Yeah. And oh, then I tried yeah. to backtrack it by being like, Elon <laughs> Musk. <laughs> still yeah. is. He still is Elon Musk, basically. <clears throat> yeah. But he's also a yeah. killer. Yeah. He's the mur- the murderer. <clears throat> but what was the real murder behind everything, Chad? Uh, his former business partner, who was played by Janelle Monae, mm-hmm. uh, whose name was Andy. Yeah, Andy or Cassandra, um, and then her twin sister's name is Helen, and that's mm-hmm. who's actually been on the island the whole time, playing her sister. Playing her sister, <clears throat> because Ed Norton goes to her house and kills her because she has proof that he screwed her over, lied in court when they cut her out because they started this multi-million dollar company together Mm -hmm. and she got nothing. Mm -hmm. Uh, So she was basically going to expose him. He goes, kills her. Her sister finds out and is like, I know one of them from the court case killed her. We got to figure out who. Yeah. And that was the super fucked up part too is that all of... and. Basically, Andy, Janelle Monet's character, introduces Edward Norton uh, to all of her friends. Like, yeah. she was friends with all this group of people uh, that is now on the island. And uh, he kills her, steals, or sorry, before he kills her, he steals her company idea. And because he is now going to be rich, uh, they throw her under the bus and call her a liar uh, so that they could as they mentioned multiple times in the movie, is suck on his tit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and well, it's so because her, he her... wanted to, like, push forward with this new R&D project that was incredibly dangerous. And she's like, no, we can't put the entire company's, like, capital up against this. Mm-hmm. It would ruin us. Yeah. And he's like, okay, well, goodbye. We'll get yeah. rid of you, and then I'll just do it anyways. And then all of her friends <coughs> went went with him. And, because that's where the money was. Yeah, and yeah, it was bullshit. But then he killed her because she had proof uh, that she was the one who came up with it. Uh, and yeah, so he the, murdered her. the business and that everyone, all well, she the had friends the napkin that testified. With the, yeah. She had the napkin with the her original like idea on it. And then he... Business plan, yeah. And then he provided a napkin and said i have the napkin like blah 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 i'm the one who came up with it and then yeah anyways uh we're getting way off topic and if you haven't seen this you're not following us but so he killed her because she had the proof that it was her thing 
Um, yeah. And it gets pretty interesting because he is not the one who dies uh, at yeah. his death party. mystery party. Yeah. Um, it's Batista that gets killed. Because as far as everyone at the party knows, except for Ed Norton, uh, Janelle Monet is still playing, is still Andy, Andy not her mm-hmm. sister Helen, disguised as her because they were twins. Um, <clears throat> so he's like shocked to see her. Edward Norton shocked to see her. Everyone else is like, wow, we didn't think you'd be here after everything that went down in court. But they don't know that she's dead. Yeah. It hadn't hit. That was the big thing. We don't, we, as, just like in the first movie, Knives Out, you don't know who hired Blanc. And <laughs> until he reveals who hired him in the first movie, uh, and then in this movie, it's the same thing. They don't, they're like, Edward Norton's like, I didn't hire you. I don't know why you're here, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then you find out at this pinnacle moment in the movie that you're talking about that Andy's twin sister hired him. Yeah. And go on. Sorry. No, and it just kind of... So that's why Blanc is there. He wasn't mm-hmm. invited to this. She she technically wasn't invited, but her sister was. Um, <coughs> and so... Oh, I kind of like lost my train of thought. Um, but as it like goes through the flashbacks and stuff like that, I was like, okay, Ed Norton's the killer. That's like when I realized when it flashed back and I was like, cause I thought it was going to be Andy that killed Ed Norton because the tension was there. You know, mm-hmm. she was the business partner that got screwed over. I was like, that's, but I was like, that seems very predictable. Mm-hmm. But that's what they do because they did the same thing in the first movie. Yeah. Yeah. They make you think like, um, but also kind of like in the first movie, like the one that actually gets the inheritance, I thought it was going to be like that random dude, Daryl, like had like actually had something to do with it, but he was just a dude that got stuck there when quarantine happened. In Glass Onion? Yeah. Do you know who that guy was? I No, I wasn't paying too much attention a, to his face. Another just random ass tie-in to the first movie. The, you know the two cops that were assisting Blanc in the first movie? Yeah. There is the the guy from I don't know their names, I'm so sorry. I wasn't planning on saying this. Uh but there was the African American guy who was in Get Out and then the white guy. Yeah. That was him. The white oh, guy. Oh no shit. Yeah, that's who okay. played that guy. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. Cuz he's just like a stoner dude that was just like stuck there. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, stuck there because quarantine. Yeah. Like fucking hilarious. Oh, it was so good. And then, like, the big, like, aha, gotcha moment, like, in almost, I mean, the overall ending wasn't true, like, to, uh, like, a Coen Brothers type film, but, like, it was like a, you have no power here, like, Mm -hmm. oh, what, it's your word against mine, like, I can bury you with money, like, and then, but, like, that's the world that we live in also, it was... It was a really introspective look at the elite, yeah. which is also terrifying because, like, we don't know what they're doing. Well, Not to get, uh, like, tinfoil hattie on it, but... One of the cool parts <clears throat> of the movie... Um, well, not cool. I mean, it was really... It just showed how shitty they were. Um, even after Edward Norton gets caught and he confesses to murdering Andy in front of... Everybody, he's like, you got no proof, and blah, blah, blah. murdering Dave Bautista because he finds out that yeah, and then he tries Bautista tries to blackmail Edward Norton yep. to yeah. getting him more money in like a position of power because yeah. he's basically like a social media influencer, but he like wants to actually be on the air like on yeah. TV regularly. But the group of people that are there, even knowing that he killed these people, are like. We we didn't see shit. We you know we're gonna stay where the money is. Yeah, and, and it's not until the the end when after they realize that there's n- no money that's gonna well, be she, left after she this. ruins him basically. Yeah, the, the the whole idea behind the movie is the the 
Edward Norton and Andy are sorry, I forget what Edward Norton's character's name is, but Edward Miles. Norton's character Miles and Brown. Andy yeah. come up with a uh how would you call it? A like light energy source. Yeah. But it's like unstable, and that's why Andy's like, I won't go forward with this. It's like the until... dry ice equivalent of hydrogen power. Yeah. And so in the end of it, um Helen. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Also Andy's Juno twins. Yeah. Twins <laughs> yeah, twin sister. Uh basically blows the fucking place up yeah. using that element uh that they had created. And, well, and he already it, had like his entire like island running on it. So like Exactly. But yeah. they mentioned throughout the, like as like the fuel burns, it just releases like hydrogen gas uh into the air. And I think it's Catherine Hans like so literally it just creates like fucking a Hindenburg. Yeah. You know, it's lighter than air but highly flammable. And mm-hmm. so yeah, Janelle Monet like starts a fire and like throws a crystal of this compound into him. Just yeah, and essentially, basically, once uh, she confronts Edward Norton at the end, because they don't kill him, he doesn't go to jail. There's no proof that they could like tie anything to him, because um, he gets destroyed. Uh, she basically says, "Hey, this crazy like billion dollar idea." that you are writing everything on, uh, this is it. And it just blew up in your face. And the whole world is going to see that. And destroyed the Mona Lisa. Yeah, and destroyed the actual Mona Lisa. Which he, like, took out as collateral because he, like, lent money to the French. Yeah. Whatever. But, yeah, and she's like... Some billionaire and shit. And your, your thing that you're stacking everything against just destroyed the Mona Lisa. You're fucked. Yeah. And then all of Andy's friends are like, I didn't actually see you know, yeah. this happen and blah blah blah. Oh and yeah, I, s- I saw the original napkin. I saw yeah. him do this. I saw him say that. Again, showing how big a piece of shit they are. Yeah. But The second yeah. that the money dries up, then they're like, oh yeah, that's my conscience. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have too many cons about this movie. I I thoroughly enjoyed it. I did. I did too. I thought, oh, let me run down my this my theory, my original theory was that Oh yeah. um that all of them were in on it, that they knew that Edward Norton's character ha- Miles had killed Andy and her sister Helen had Round had looped them all in on it uh, to get him to confess. Uh, there's a mm. scene in the movie where Helen gets shot, um, but she gets saved because she has like a book in her pocket and the bullet doesn't penetrate. Um, and Blanc pours Jeremy Renner's hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Not Crybaby Craig, because that was their mistake in the movie. That's my con. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the color would have been well, off. It would have been too orange. Yeah, yeah. But um, I thought that the it was one of because earlier in the movie for Edward Norton's like death for his fake murder mystery, he gets shot in the chest with a fake arrow, and there's like an explosion of blood uh, that like spurts out. So I thought she was wearing one of those to pretend that she got killed, and then they were going to get him to confess that he murdered Andy. That's what I thought was going to happen. Um, it's not what happened. Obviously, we already just told you guys everything that happened, but, um, <laughs> yeah, it was hot sauce, and I thought that was weird, but, yeah, they did a good job. I don't really I was wondering con. why they, like, made a big deal about the hot sauce, like, in that one scene. I love when they show it, though. Like, yeah. the label is, like, Jeremy Renner's face. Yeah, and, and it like, says, I like, wonder, is it a real hot sauce? Renner fire or something like that? Yeah. I don't know. We should find out. Yeah. <laughs> But anyways, yeah. great movie, fantastic. Hopefully, if you haven't seen it, you didn't listen this far because we just ruined everything. Or but... just still watch it because it's enjoyable. There's yeah, funny one-liners. The characters are so eclectic. Mm-hmm. It's it's great. <clears throat> but why know it's better than the fact that Jeremy Renner has a hot sauce? 
we are sponsored by a hot sauce. Tell them about it. Yeah. That was good. I that know, was I good. thought so. <laughs> I ruined it by saying that part, but that was good. No, I thought so too. <laughs> I think the fact that it's like explaining the joke, but it's still funny yeah. afterwards. You yeah. Know? We just mansplained it to our entire audience. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, sponsor number two, Crybaby Craig's Hot Sauce. It's a pickled mm-hmm. habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes on practically anything, including Janelle Monet. <laughs> Listen up. We'll tell you more about it. <laughs> Hey you nerds, do you love spice? Supporting small businesses? What about enhancing the flavor of your favorite foods? If you said yes to any of those, our good friends over at Crybaby Craig's have the perfect solution for you. Crybaby Craig's is a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes perfectly with your favorite foods, adding the perfect amount of spice and enhancing the flavor of everything it touches. Started in Minneapolis by Craig back in 2012, Crybaby Craig's has become a Minneapolis and Minnesota staple in the sauce world. So head over to crybabycraigs.com and order yours today. Uh. (laughs) 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 Fucking (laughs) dick. Okay, everyone. Uh, So uh, for this... Next part of the episode, we're going to be talking a little... I'm keeping it in that, I'm, I'm keeping in better, that first part. I got, I got a better reaction the second time than the first time. Yeah, I'm keeping that in. Beautiful. It's yeah. funny. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, The Witcher Blood Origins on Netflix. So, This will be the alert. first and last time we talk about it. Yeah, and we're just going to... I will probably eventually end up watching it just because I have a bunch of stuff to watch and some free time. Um, but who who knows if you're going to hear more about this because, spoiler alert, it wasn't that good. There's your spoiler alert. It was, it was rough. It was a tough one to get through. It's nothing against most of the people that were involved in this. No. I say most because the showrunners clearly don't give a shit. Yeah. Uh, they just want to make... Mune. Yeah. And it's... Oh. It starts off like Lord of the Rings. It's a very Fellowship of the Ring. Copied? N- narration, some... Yeah backstory even like introducing like they don't call it the fellowship but even introducing like the group of people like yeah like this is this person and they're this and here's this person and they're gonna be this it was just like okay 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 yeah yeah the the acting was top tier that's (laughs) <laughs> I was gonna say not great. Um, <clears throat> I have seen worse, which is kind of a bummer because one I of think the it was just the writing more than yes, anything. Yes, yeah, exactly. I agree with that one hundred percent because the one of the actresses is the girl, and I don't know her name off the top of my head. I'll Michelle Yeoh. Is it? Yeah, from everything. Yeah, everything Everywhere, always all, all at once. once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Also, that's what made me want to watch it. I was like, "Oh, she's in this. Might not be also, bad." Also, wasn't she in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon? Is not her? Yeah, also? like back in the day. Yeah, and she's been in a handful of things recently. Yeah. Um, that's what made <clears throat> me kind of hyped about it. Cause I was like, <clears throat> when I heard about it, I was like, ah, "Fucking a prequel!" Like I got uh, that yeah. part kind of like threw me off, but I was like, "Hey, if it means that we get more like." witcher content like no. i'm for it and then henry cavill left and then it was revealed why he left and then i watched the first episode and i was like i get why he left Oof, yeah it was rough it there's not source material anymore yeah. it's they're just making shit up as they go uh they're taking <clears throat> it's like someone heard what the premise of the Witcher video game was, which is already, it's 
close to the books, but it's still, you know, it's a deviation because it's a video game. So you have to, like, make your own way, but there's still, like, plot points that are true to the books. Mm. It's like someone explained the Witcher video game to the showrunners, and they're like, yeah, but what if we changed this Mm -hmm. and this and this? We're just going to use the terminology Witcher, and there's Mm going to be elves and magic. It's like, sweet. So you're making, like... A Dungeons Lord of the and Rings. Dragons? Yeah. But not true to Dungeons and Dragons either? Yeah, it's... It's wild. And one of the opening scenes has uh, Hoskier, mm-hmm. uh, the the bard from the first two seasons of The Witcher. <clears throat> and the only reason that he's in it is to set up this flashback so he can write a song. Mm-hmm. Like, it's... He's literally only a part of this to be the bridge that connects the two. It was, yeah. It's, yeah. it's I personally wild. am not going to watch any more of it. I probably will. And that, and that, like, takes a lot for me to ditch something after the first episode. Because, like... Even Game of Thrones, I was after the first episode, I was not so, the first season. I was not sold. I was like, eh. I was sold I on Game know. of Thrones about halfway through the first season. I was like, okay. But also, I started watching it after season two was out. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm intrigued enough that I'm going to watch this so I can see where season two goes. Mm. It wasn't like uh, I was yeah. watching it week to week. I was a little behind the ball to get started. This, I mean, the cinematography looks great. Like, I want to say something positive. Like, it looks good. No. The scenery, the... The fight scenes are cool. Yeah, there's a couple of things. Like, you pointed out, I didn't notice it myself, but you pointed out that uh, one of the girls, I don't remember what her actual name is, but she's called the Lark. Mm -hmm. She's basically like an elf warrior that gave up her station to be a bard. Mm -hmm. but she is really good with, like, throwing knives. Mm -hmm. And you pointed this out to me, you know, it looks like she just kind of, like, hap... Like, she put as much effort into throwing a knife as you would, like, throwing your cards down on a table when you're folding a hand of poker. Like, just Mm -hmm. like, "Eh, fuck this. And then the knife is like, phew! (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And kills a dude, like, across town. Like, the fuck? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so there's weird things like that. I I don't know, man. Like I think it would take you watching it and then telling me to then continue on. Like you would have to like sell me on since you're gonna continue to watch it. You would have to be like, hey man, it gets better. Watch it, and then I would I th- be like, yeah. no. I think as of right <laughs> now, the way that it stands is I would not be hating on it as much as I am if it wasn't tied to The Witcher. Mm-hmm. Because, I don't know, the premise of The Witcher is you're following a Witcher. Mm-hmm. Supposedly, by the end of the season, they create a Witcher. The like, first the first Witcher. Witcher. But it hasn't happened. You know, like... And if they were to not call it... Not tie it to The Witcher... And, I mean, still create a witcher, but call it, like, a mutant. Because that's what they also... That's, like, a slang term for the witchers in the books and in the game and stuff like that. It's, like, you're an abomination. Like, just don't... How is this part of the lore? It's not, like... Ugh. It's frustrating. I would like it a lot more if it was just like, check out this fantasy. Yeah. It's elves. They're fighting. They introduce monsters. It's about these rogues that are trying to save their heritage. Sweet. But I'm not thrilled. I'm not super excited, but I will end up watching it. Look at you just petting a cat. Well, she left with all the animals. Had to settle for the cat. 
you can't see. There's a cat sitting on the chair next to him, and Jake is allergic to cats and mm. isn't a huge fan of this particular cat either. Nope. <clears throat> but he's over there showing it love. Was it because he scratched her chin a little too long? No, it's just being a brat yesterday. Whatever. <laughs> My girlfriend has the dogs over at her mom's house right now, and it's very quiet in here. So I brought the cat oh, in here. S- saw her for out. a second. Her face oh, popped up. Can you up. see her? No, her, her face popped up. Let's see if I can get her. Cat, <laughs> keep talking. Well, oh, oh, there she is. There she is. There's the kitty. She's the worst. All right, lay back down. <laughs> <coughs> but yeah, anyways. All things considered, if you want to watch the show, obviously go watch it. Make your own opinions for yourself. We're not excited about it. And this was a mistake. It really comes <laughs> <laughs> It really comes down to it's just poorly written, which is weird cuz like they teased this show 2 years ago. Like they had plenty of time. Like they could have done better. But mm-hmm. as we know from Henry Cavill stepping away and him being recast, it's because the showrunners just want to make money. They don't care about the source material. Would you fucking stop? (laughs) Is he being recast, though? Because I was reading something that um, they're going to give uh, Geralt, his character, uh, Henry Cavill's character, a heroic send-off. And I I wonder if uh, then Liam is going to play a different Witcher and not Geralt of Rivera, Riviera, whatever. If they do, they can't continue the story arc with Yennefer and Ciri. Who cares? Yennefer is the worst. No, I know. Again, that's showrunners doing. Um, Dude. But, yeah. I mean, if they're going to send, like, give him a send-off and kill off Geralt. I don't know that. that that's just... If, I... But, like, if that rumor is true, like, all bets are off because... The Witcher show takes place before the games. <laughs> oh, everyone needs to be watching this on <laughs> YouTube because Jake has a cat, a, a pussy in his lap, if you will, <laughs> sniffing his blue balls. <laughs> uh, she got off. All right, fine. Sorry, mom. It's like, <laughs> not, that's not sexual at all if you want to see if, you, what we're if talking you're watching about, go check yeah. it out <clears> oh <throat> uh, but anyways yeah um let's get into some rumors and speculations yeah. didn't want to spend too much time on that sorry no <laughs> yeah yeah so uh all right the big one we're gonna switch gears here the big one and these are just rumors nothing's confirmed uh, but I hope, 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 hope it's true. Uh, we are rumored to get Robert Downey Jr. back as Tony Stark in uh, Secret Wars, uh, Avengers Secret Wars, or Marvel Secret Wars, whatever. But yeah, um, yeah. whether it's Tony Stark at a different time Pre- or, a, or, yeah. or a variant of Tony Stark, uh, we don't know. Because the Secret Wars is kind of going to be, you know, the multiversal war. Yeah. That was, you know, hinted at in Loki. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that we'll hear more about it in Quantum Mania coming out next mm-hmm. month. <clears throat> now you can say next month, Jake, and you're right. Yeah, it comes out this month. Next month. Next month, yeah. Yeah. Uh, January. <laughs> Goose, blah, blah. (laughs) The anger sharks are swimming in my head. (laughs) You gotta dunk that shit. (laughs) But, yes. uh, As long as they do it in a way that doesn't take away from his death. Yeah. I think a variant would be better than, like, a pre-death Tony. If they were going to do a variant, I'm still really... I want Tom Cruise, Tony Stark. I do, too. 
<laughs> I would rather that happen than RDJ come back. Yeah. Only because of the gravity that his death had. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love RDJ. I think that he is oh, yeah. a perfect Tony Stark. Mm-hmm. But because he is dead, I think that, one, it's fan service. I think it's going to... Well, I think they're going to... It's going to be... This is why I came to the uh, the timeline part of it rather than a variant is because this is what they're doing for Deadpool 3 is and they're going to take Logan from a timeline before his <coughs> death. So they're not yeah. messing with yeah. Logan's death in Whether Logan. It's a, well, we don't know for sure if it's again different timeline or a variant or like a different See, universe i again this is rumored we don't know shit um but it's rumored that <coughs> uh dead it, deadpool 3 will uh deadpool will have um cables uh time machine and he'll be jumping around fucking with shit and we know that he desperately wants Wolverine to be his friend. Uh, Mm -hmm. So I assume he's going to like get Wolverine at some point before his death. And that's how their shenanigans are going to happen. But it's rumored that the TVA uh, is going to get pissed about them jumping around, changing shit. uh, Mm -hmm. And that's where the tie in to the MCU will happen. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes sense. And that would be a, a, good way to introduce Deadpool as well. <clears throat> but I imagine something will happen at the end where the TVA basically convince Wade that uh Wolverine has to die like in his own timeline and they'll return him to his timeline so all the events of his life will have happened the same way that they did leading up to Logan. Mm -hmm. But this is uh, just my theory. Uh, Because Deadpool is kind of immortal, uh, he doesn't have a place in the timeline. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think the TVA is, like, that's how he's going to come to the MCU. Rather than being like, hey, like, you have to go back to your timeline and live your events of your life this way. Because no matter what happens, you don't have an end to your timeline. I think yeah. they're going to be like, come here and help us. Or something something like, or he's going to be a shithead about it and just come there anyway. And yeah. be like, hey, fuck this. Uh, you know, if Wolverine's not going to be here, I don't want to be here. Maybe I'll try this shit out. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah. But we also know that Ryan Reynolds said that he's not playing Deadpool anymore after this movie. So I don't fucking know what's happening with this shit. <laughs> I I don't know if that's like, I get it. He's a busy dude. Mm. He has a lot going on. He's trying to, <clears throat> you know, build an army. Well, like well, of children. Kind of, well, and just businesses, <laughs> but yeah, his own sports team, mobile phones, alcohol, pants, children. I know. Pants. Yep. Yeah, there's like a thing now where he's got these like like cargo pants kind of, but they look like slacks. Interesting. Either it's real or I dreamt it. Could be either. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I, I swear I saw it though. <laughs> well, I mean, he's all over the place, so I mean. Yeah. You know, and he's getting a little bit older. You know, I'm mm-hmm. sure that he doesn't want to like yeah. act forever. Especially with how many children he has. I don't know. Fuck them kids. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, also, another rumor that we got. So I didn't know how to transition from that one. Uh, That's okay. Is that uh, in Secret Wars, coming oh. up from Marvel, is you know kind of a like the one of the big bads. Uh, is going to be the Beyond Burger. Uh, sorry, the Beyonder, uh, which is like a variant of Kang, you were telling me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
It messes you up by being healthier for you, but you think <laughs> yeah. that it tastes the same as an actual it's like burger. A, it's like a mind fuck, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but, I mean, that would be interesting uh, to see because, mm-hmm. I mean, we already know that there's variants because we were mm-hmm. introduced to Jonathan Majors as he who remains. So, and as long as, as they we... don't do, like, Battle Planet... You know, like they did in the comics in the 80s, but actually explore like the multiversal war. Yeah. I was going to say, the biggest like uh, hint, I guess, or confirmation, not actually confirmed, but confirmed, confirmed, uh, is that in um, the Secret Wars comic issue one, the Beyonder is a variant of Kang. Um, Yeah. Na- and he calls himself the Beyonder. So um, I think that's where they're going with it. We'll see. It's just a rumor at this point. But <clears throat> yeah. Leading up to something called the Kang Dynasty, which is supposed to be the end game of. I thought you know, it was the other way around. I thought Kang Dynasty came first, then Secret Wars. Kang Dynasty is what it's all leading up to. It'll be all of Kang's variants against the Avengers. Mm. Yeah. Okay, then. Yeah. That sounds... Everybody's fucking dying. (laughs) Yeah. So, um... Yeah, so knowing that the Kang Dynasty is, like, the end game of phase whatever, um... I'm thinking that it is very possible and plausible that Kang is going to pop up all over the place. So Secret Wars, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the main bad guy. Hopefully we get some more in Loki Season 2. We, hopefully we get some more Kang. I would love that. Um, yeah. We know already Quantumania. We got Kang there. Like... It's going to be very... And Jonathan Majors has even said himself that we're going to get so many different versions of Kang like leading up to the Kang Dynasty. And he plays every version, which is amazing. But it's going to be wild when we get to the Kang Dynasty because it's going to be one guy (laughs) but in different forms across different timelines. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be crazy. I'm so stoked for that. <coughs> yeah, it's going to be crazy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I'm pretty sure that that one is... I would say that that one is... not. It's not confirmed, but I would say that that one's probably correct. Yeah. Just based on the comic book. I mean, and... also like Nathaniel Richards. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, we're getting the Fantastic Four. So why not have... Nathaniel Richards, who becomes... He is a variant of Kang. Mm-hmm. Uh, same with... If, that, if uh, that last name sounds familiar, there's a reason. Yeah. Go on. The Richards. Say. Yeah, you know that famous family of four? <laughs> uh, they're kind of fantastic. Yeah. Reed Richards, Fan if you four will. stick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's uh, his son. Like, they don't want to... Yeah. Him and uh, Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic, Sue Storm, the Invisible Woman. It's their child. Um, I was trying to play off of how terribly the reboot ended. Well, there's like four of us. We should have like a team name. Oh. Look at this place. The thing goes, it's fantastic. Say that again. Flash a screen. Fan four stick. Credits. It was maybe bad. we'll get maybe we'll get fucking um Michael B. Jordan as a variant of I did read a rumor. This is not something that we talked about, but I did read a rumor <coughs> that we will see Chris Evans again. But, but as it Johnny won't Storm. Be, but as Johnny Storm, not as Captain America. That I read that too. And fantastic. like a fan it was kinda like a I also read like a fan theory or a fan like cast for that. Where, like, you know, he comes out and he's, like, just, like, in regular, like, street clothes. And mm-hmm. people are like, oh, my God, Steve Rogers, like, Captain America, like, calling out for him. And then he says, flame on, and pff, 
That would be dope. Yeah. That'd be dope. I would also love to see maybe they do, you know, Michael B. Jordan and cuz I, I I this again rumored. I read that uh Kevin Feige is like let's go bigger than Endgame. Like let's bring in everybody past and present. Like it's... so maybe maybe we'll get Michael B. Jordan, Chris Evans as both as the human torch from different you know, like maybe we'll get fucking Tom Cruise. I mean there's gonna Tony be like Stark, nineteen you know, Jonathan Major Kangs, so yeah. why can't there be a Chris Evans? And then they human just torch murder and... everybody and like reset you know, yeah. going into It's a phase great way to get six. rid of the Fox universe. Yeah. Just kill everyone. Kill them. <laughs> kill them all. <laughs> <coughs> mm. Nope. I would. I no, would. I, I was going to try and make a joke, and then I was oh. like, that seems very Kanye. So I stopped. <laughs> uh-huh. I don't want to know. Yeah. I'll ask you after. Yeah, we'll, I'll, I'll you tell after. you afterwards. Um, <laughs> let's skip the next one just because we've been going for a hot minute here. No. No, I think that one's important because that's going to that, come up soon. Yeah, you're right. Okay, you're yeah. right. Go, take it away. Uh, the <laughs> how do you go into this after that? Uh, well, we've been complaining for a very long time that after the events of the Eternals, there is a giant monster robot sticking out of the ocean, and it's we're like, why the stone. fuck? Nobody's talking about that. And they kind of mention it a little bit in She-Hulk. There's like a news clipping of it. Um, but we know now, going into the Thunderbolts movie... Um, Again, that rumored. Rumored. Heavily that, rumored, though. Sorry, we don't know now. We know that there's a rumor that's... Correct? Uh, yeah. Okay. I get I get to where you're trying to go. I was just... Yeah. Picking up what I'm putting down. Yeah. The, but yeah, for... So this is basically going to be an island now. It's not. It's going to be grown over. There's probably vegetation growing. Shit well, like it that. came out of an island that had a volcano. So like, yeah. there's already a cluster of islands. But I think by this thing emerging, it's kind of like connected the like the small mm. chain of islands that's just yeah. like random. This is the rumor is is <coughs> that this is where adamantium is going to come from. Uh, for those of us who follow Marvel, is they've been calling adamantium, um, fuck, what's it called? The other metal, vibranium. Wakanda. Vibranium, because they didn't have the rights to adamantium, which is a very X Men thing. So now we're thinking we're going to get adamantium from this island, and they're going to be mining it out of the core of this island. People are going to be fighting over this. <coughs> And they're going to send in the Thunderbolts to neutralize the situation on this island. Uh, we also think that this is where our mutants are. Not where they originate from, but this is where we're going to get our proper introduction to mutants in. Yeah, the the, the rumor in theory is that this island chain plus the celestial body that's now like you said, kind of like overgrown with vegetation and stuff like that will be Genosha. Mm -hmm. If that sounds familiar, it's either because you've read comics or watched the 90s X-Men show. Uh, it's kind of like the safe haven uh, for mutants that uh, Magneto kind of like runs, governs, whatever. Mm. Uh, which would be cool. And, I mean, I did look it up at one point in time be because of the rights differences where they had, like, vibranium and adamantium. They had to make a distinction. Basically, vibranium is, like, the raw material, where adamantium is, like, the hardened metal-only version of mm -hmm. it. <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, but what were you going to say? I saw the look on your face. I just remembered I saw a clip uh, recently uh, from Quantumania, and they show um, uh, Ant-Man uh, interacting with, um, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, Ultron. What? Yeah. 
I should have sent it to you. I'm so sorry. Yeah, you should have. I'll find, <laughs> I'll find it. I'll find it and send it to you. I, I will. We're, we're, we're done here. Yeah. 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 Uh, but, I mean, that would be cool because, I mean, we know that mutants already exist. Mm-hmm. Black Panther 2, uh, you know, Namor. Miss Marvel. And Miss Marvel because they don't want to be tied to Inhumans at all. Yeah. <coughs> Multi- Can you Multiverse blame, of but... Madness. We got Professor X. Yeah, and literally yeah. they say the leader of the X-Men, but that's also a, you know, a different universe. But in the main MCU universe, you know, we know that mutants are there now. I annoying I annoyingly yelled out while we were watching that movie in the theater. I was like, "Oh, they're playing the X-Men theme." <laughs> when he like rolled out. I was like, "Oh." I remember. I was sitting next to you. Yeah. <laughs> oh. uh, and then just a, a fun a fun little throw out is uh that 90s show is coming mm. is it gonna be a netflix or hulu i think it's netflix, netflix. yeah netflix yep which is now it's if you remember that 70s show i this this is their kids. This is Eric and it's, Donna's it's kids. It's the Fuller it's... House or the Girl Meets World. But yeah. I hope that yeah. it's better than both. Because both, yeah. like, had its moments. I didn't mm-hmm. watch either of them fully, but, like, both had, like, their moments. I did watch Fuller House through, all the way through. Did you? I, I did, yeah, yeah. I was a huge Full House fan when I was I was, a kid. too, but I only watched, like, yeah. the first, like, three or four episodes of the first season. Yeah. And I was like... I've had I did not watch. I'm actually kind of surprised at myself that I didn't watch Girl Meets World because I loved Boy Meets World growing up. Same. No, I did too. But I don't even know that I'll watch this. Honestly, I'll, I'll watch the first episode, and maybe the first two. No. I'm expecting it to be just fan service for a younger generation, but the, with the enough preview fans. does show every everybody except the the rapey one are coming Hide, back yeah. for it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> uh Ashton Kutcher, Mila Kunis, uh uh Topher Grace. Oh god. I always uh, forget her name. Donna. <laughs> Donna. <laughs> Laura Prepon. Prepon? Prepon? Yes. Yeah. Prepon. Uh, and and uh, Ray Prepon, Wilmer, you know, if you or Valderrama, they're all reprising the roles. I don't know if it'll be like permanently or just to introduce kind of like show. in Fuller House. Yeah, they just pop in here and there, but yeah, uh, it's interesting. I loved the show growing up, so so did I. So let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah. so just keep that on your radar, I guess. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I mean. Let's go ahead and close out this episode, shall we, Jake? Okay, bye. Just kidding, but before we do, we are going to talk, before we close out, <laughs> before we do, before we <laughs> close out, we are going to talk about our honorable mentions. Chad, what do you got? Well, I mean, we have a couple of weeks here, so I'm trying to think what I have watched. <coughs> uh, well, I... It was super ambitious of me. Uh, I tried to... It didn't even work out because, you know, we did stuff on New Year's Eve. Uh, But I wanted to get through the MCU, like, timeline so I could watch Endgame, you know, as it turns over. I wasn't actually going to, like, time it so that the snap happened at midnight, but Mm. didn't even get close. Got to, like, Guardians of the Galaxy 1. It was super, super good planning (laughs) on my time. Uh, <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, I've been watching Jack Ryan, uh, season three's out now. That's mm-hmm. fantastic. Um, since we recorded last, I did watch a violent night. Finally. Woo. Oh my God. That we might... talked to the, the table talked about it last night. Yeah. At dinner. Yeah. We were all talking about it. That soon might as, be one as of As soon my as we brought favorite. it up, everybody was like, Oh, I love that fucking movie. That might be my new favorite Christmas film. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about you? What do you have for uh, some honorable mentions? Uh, be, the notable ones are um, Hunters. If you're not watching Hunters, go watch it. It's on Amazon Prime. It's so fantastic. 
Uh, it's Logan Lerman and uh, Al Pacino. They are. It's set in the nineteen seventies, and they are a group of Jews uh, that are hunting down and killing Nazis that escaped to America after the war. It is so fucking good. Oh my god. Anyways, um, other than that, we finished the first season of that, and then we we just started Jack Ryan season three. Uh, also on Amazon, or yeah, on Amazon Prime. Um, fantastic. Loved the first two seasons. I'm loving this season. Uh, and the other ones are, I am in anticipation for the new one coming out. I am forcing Nicole to watch the Mission Impossible movies with me. Uh, we finished the first two. Uh, <coughs> we have four, yeah, four more to get through before... Uh, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 comes out. So oh. uh, we're catching up on those right now. What is... It's hard to pick a favorite Mission Impossible, at least for me it is. What's mm. your least favorite Mission Impossible? The... S- Ooh, that's tough. Uh, it's probably... I Probably a tie between the second and the third one. I love the mm. first one. Fantastic. The second one was good, but it was a John Woo film, and John Woo kind of does like over the top action sequences that just aren't practical. Um, oh, like a six foot slide through sand to kick up a gun straight up and then catch straight, it behind yeah, your straight, back, straight into yeah, yeah. Uh, or like we all know that scene, or like going head first <laughs> at each other at like sixty miles an hour with no helmets on on motorcycles and crashing into each other and being totally fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, The third one, I didn't care for a ton, but I love Philip Seymour Hoffman. That's where, that's where the hangup comes for me too. (laughs) And he uh, plays such a good (laughs) bad guy in that movie. And the action was really, really good. Um, But on the opposite side of that, my favorites are definitely uh, Ghost Protocol, uh, which is the fourth one, and um, uh, it's got to be the Fallout with Henry Cavill as the bad guy. That was yeah. that one was really good too. That one is really good. Yeah. So I'm stoked about the new the because it's the last two in the series. Yeah. Um, it's Dead Reckoning Part One and Two, and uh, Haley Atwell is in those. Oh, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, I not uh, if know it, that. you don't know who that is, that's uh, Agent Carter from the Captain America movies, and yeah. also Agent Carter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So <coughs> those are my honorable mentions. Uh, go watch everything that we just mentioned because we only mention shit that we think you guys should watch, or we tell you. If or we, we tell mention you, it, we're hey. like, hey, maybe don't. Yeah. Go watch it. <laughs> yeah, go check it out. Um, yeah, they're especially hunters. This is my favorite thing. There's only two. The the second season just dropped, and it's my favorite thing on TV right now. And Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan's really good. But yeah, yeah, hunters is better. I I haven't started hunters yet, so I will, I will definitely be watching that. Yeah. Well, outside of that, I mean, we love you all. Thank you for sticking around. Uh, This is, I guess, technically, we don't have, like, an actual structure for our our seasons. Uh, We're just kind of going it by year. So this is officially (laughs) season three. Uh, We appreciate you all being here. (coughs) And uh, if you like what we're doing, uh, support us, or as Jake likes to say... Give us your money. Yes. The the best ways to do that is through buymeacoffee.com slash allthingsnerd. It allows you to... subscribe on a monthly basis you get some behind the scenes stuff uh some bonus materials some exclusive merch depending on the level that you give at or you can do one-time donations or you can do one-time donations yeah you can literally it's called buy buy me a coffee but uh i changed the button on it so it says buy us a beer um so you can buy us a beer if you want um If you don't want to do that either, but you still want to get something out of it, uh, you know, allthingsnerdpodcast.com is where we have our, our web store. It's a great way to support us, uh, get some merch, 
everything that we make at this point in time goes 100% back into the show. It allows us to do giveaways, which we have one coming up. We just haven't hashed out a date or the exact parameters behind it, but it's mm. it's going to be a good one. Uh, and then, I mean, just like, subscribe, share the show. I mean, wherever you mm. listen to podcasts, on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, those are kind of the big ones. Um, or just like... You know, follow us on Instagram. Tell us we're mm-hmm. funny. Because we are funny, damn it. Or just, like, talk to us. Like, yeah. we love interacting with with you guys. <laughs> so, if you got questions, you want to bullshit about something, or I love if this. If you disagree with if us. We're, if we're wrong about something or you disagree with us, call us the fuck out. I would love to have a discussion about it. So Yeah. yeah. And depending on how well wrong you, you are or how well uh, you school us uh we might even ask you to be on the show yeah any who's yeah. we love you all thank you so much happy new year's we hope you had a great holiday season and this has been the all things nerd podcast thank you